Hey guys, it's Simple Guy Coding again. In this episode, let's talk a little background on our laser module. So, uh, apparently, there's two types of laser modules out there. Uh, one that you just power it up with 12 volts and it comes on, or, and the one that has the TTL control. The uh, preferable one, in my view, is the one with TTL control, and that's that last pin uh, right over there. What's that say? Let me. PWM, so it's uh, pulse width modulation. You can run that out from the uh, one of the uh, uh, the cards that you're uh, using on your system, and control the brightness and the power of the LED. So I think that's obviously the better way to go. This happens to be a three watt laser uh, Sunwin brand off of Amazon. I think I paid 150 at the time, uh, something like that for this, um, and it's still working for me amazingly. One thing I noticed, uh, you know, on some of the old videos, uh, once the laser had power, the fan would go be going at a good rate, and then once I turned the laser on, it's like the fan speed would drop down, like the voltage was dropping, and, and certainly it was. In the past, I've been using a connector, uh, the, the correct connector for this guy, but it's been pretty, uh, you know, lightweight wires coming through there. Um, I can't remember what happened to the original wire connector that came with the unit. It might have been, had some heavier wires, but I don't think by much. So I decided to make sure that my 12 volts was getting up to my laser here. I've got a uh, rather high gauge, um, let's see if we can get her, get her in here, some relatively high gauge power distribution wire here that I'm going to use to uh, run from a um, <clears throat> dedicated 12 volt power supply. That's pretty thick stuff there, and it's real copper. You can feel the wire is heavy. <clears throat> and instead of running through this little connector, I decided to just take uh, one of these, uh, this is a little bit lighter wire here, but I just take one of these connector sets and just solder it right onto that capacitor because that capacitor leads uh, plus and minus are exactly the same, uh, connected right directly to the plus and minus on the on the input. So I've just wired these to the uh, capacitor leads because it was convenient. And then um, I just plug in like this, and uh, it'll power up. Yeah, you know. so no problem there. I just so I, I made a little mod to it. My uh, uh, E6000 glue is still setting, so looks like I disturbed that. I'll need to let that set for a while longer as a strain relief. The other thing we want to do, and I did this in the wiring on the mostly printed CNC machine when I had this set uh, printed uh, or print, uh, set up on there. Um, Leo 69, and there's a good article and several good articles actually on the Vicious One uh, or V1 Engineering now, I should say, V1 Engineering website under How To Lasers. Uh, there's a lot of good articles under there. Uh, in one of them, Leo 69 recommends putting a 10k ohm resistor between the PWM signal and ground. That way, uh, if the laser powers up and uh, the Arduino card isn't started or it's not driving properly yet, uh, there might be an opportunity for this laser to power on by itself or turn on by itself without getting the PWM signal, right? So a little glitch at power on time. I've had seen that happen. Uh, a 10k resistor significantly reduces that possibility, although it does not entirely eliminate it, um, but it uh, certainly is a lot nicer than not having it. So my goal here is to see if I can get the little 10k resistor between minus and PWM on the back of that connector without destroying the laser. We'll give it a try here, and then we'll talk about some more stuff. By the way, if you're wondering what wire to connect your uh, what pin on uh, which whatever card you have to connect up that PWM pin to, uh, check on uh, viciousone.com, uh, uh, or V1 Engineering rather, I keep saying the old one, v1engineering.com, um, how to and lasers is the section you want to look at. And then he actually gives pictures of the cards in there and which uh, pins on which cards to use. So. And of course, I'm making this change for a ramps card, so I'm in pins under bar ramps.h. And for pin 9 here, I'm just going to change pin 9 to pin 44. And we'll comment that out. And 
and we'll go ahead and recompile. But if you don't have a ramps card, check out this page on V1 Engineering. It's uh, it's under uh, how to, and then on laser down here, it's uh, the overview basics page that I'm getting this from. And then, uh, of course, here's the information for each of the boards. Uh, Rambo 23, uh, Mini Rambo, uh, Rambo 45, Mini Rambo 23, Rams 44, and uh, apparently that one hasn't been verified yet. So you probably have to go into the uh, board name under bar pins.h and modify the uh, the appropriate spot in there. But, uh, you know, for, for my ramps, I'm just going to make uh, D9 uh, output to pin 44. So that should work. We'll go ahead and compile, and we'll go back downstairs and check. And, of course, just to be different, you can't seem to be able to open that header file in uh, Marlin or in the um, IDE for some reason. So you have to go find some sort of a text editor and then open it in there and make the change and then save it back. So that's a little annoying that you can't do that in the IDE, but uh, who knows why that is. All right, let's take a look at the wiring for the uh, control circuits here that I've added. Um, now, none of this is absolutely necessary. You can certainly do this by just manually powering on the router, manually powering on the laser, and uh, the only thing to control the laser, if your laser is a PWM, is that PWM line up here. So, uh, if you're running a laser, you got to have that from pin 44 to your PWM signal going into your laser. The rest of this part down here is not necessary, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about this pin 44. Uh, to control that, you need to make a change in ramps, pins ramps.h, um, or whatever your card is. Um, check v1engineering.com. Uh, they have a, a page out there that tells you what pin to use. Uh, pin 44 is for ramps. There's different pins for different cards. So here's my modification. It was pin 9 um, for D9, and it's going to be pin 44 now. And that makes uh, uh, pin 44 controllable with the laser PWM power. So uh, to turn it on uh, with a given power, uh, M106 uh, should be 1 to 255 turns it on, 255 being full power. And uh, uh, M1060 turns the laser off, as does M107. And that's all about the pin 44 here. Now, I wanted to control my laser module uh, DC power just so that I could turn it off when I wasn't using it. I could switch between the router and the laser automatically in the middle of a job. And uh, uh, these are things that I want to do that aren't necessary, you know, to use your device at all. But if you're interested in doing that, uh, go ahead and get a SSR uh, digital to digital. It's got to be DD um, solid state relay and on D10 uh, connect the minus to the minus pin of the uh, control side and the plus to the plus side. And of course you've got this little LED here that will light up when things are turned on. Run the uh, ground wire or the negative directly to your laser and then run the power lead to uh, the plus uh, connector of the uh, switched um, side of the relay and then another uh, uh, power lead to uh, the plus side of uh, your laser of course here. Um, so, so to turn this on and off I had to make a couple of changes. Uh, one thing I'm doing here is I'm just using the <coughs> uh, hot and temperature setting here so M104 S255 turns the the heater all the way on on the hot end and M104 S0 turns it off uh, the problem with this is that if you don't make this change in configuration.h by coming out commenting out thermal protection hot ends or by adding a resistor jumper to uh, the uh, uh, thermistor input 0 I believe is I believe um, if you don't do one of these things here then after a few seconds uh, the system will halt with a heating error thinking that the uh, thermistor is off the board and and uh, it doesn't want to cause a fire so obviously if you have a heater on your D10 don't change this <laughs> or your odd end don't change this but in my case it's just turning on and off this relay 
So once again, M104 S255 to turn it on, and M104 S0 to turn it off, and make that change in configuration.h. Then the uh, the router I control with D8, and this is a SSR25 DA. So it's digital. Uh, I'm sorry, DC on the input and AC on the output. And what I did here is I just put a split in my wire here and ran the hot end in to one side and back out to the router over here so that it could be switched. Uh, in the United States, in a line cord like that, black is hot. If you're in a different country, check and make sure uh, that you're doing the hot side. In the end, it probably doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference, but I'm not an electrician or licensed or anything like that so uh, you know if you burn your house down I'm sorry it's not my fault okay <laughs> so let's turn the router AC on and off with uh, M400 which makes all the moves finish first before it does the M42 D8 255 and we use the I because this pin D8 is a sensitive pin in sensitive pins.h and we'll uh, and that'll allow you to change it without the I being on there or changing the pins and sensitive pins dot H which uh, I didn't seem to have a lot of luck with so you know just throw the I on there and of course uh, to turn it off M400 finish moves and M42 D8 S0 I of course to tell, tell it to ignore the fact that it's a sensitive pin now why do we need the 400 on here because the M42 at least in the past maybe this has changed is not a buffered command so you probably you could have a whole bunch of move commands uh, G0's G1's uh, queued up in the uh, the buffer that's uh, working on and moving around and then you suddenly issue a M42 well that's an immediate command so you don't want to immediately or worst case probably m42 d8 s0 you don't want to immediately turn your router off when it still has some moves to finish that would be bad um so uh, the other way around probably wouldn't be quite as bad <laughs> right but anyway uh use those to be on the safe side and uh, i think that's it that's it that's uh, that's the nitty-gritty details of what i'm doing here um, we'll go ahead and uh, get those into ESTL cam and set up properly and we'll do a demonstration.